the characters that play a role in your story of starting Loyal Coffee. There's six of you. Yeah. You've explained that everyone's a bit different. So totally. what, what can you tell us about your partners in the business, how you all came to meet one another, how you came up with the idea of Loyal, um, how each person's strengths plays in, about how this came to be and who the people are that came together and how you made it happen. The, originally, the group started, it was kind of more like a think tank. Like we would all just meet on Monday nights and mostly just drink beer but we would also like talk about coffee a little bit. Um, and, uh, and it was mostly just a think tank to talk about just, uh, to talk about the industry and talk about our successes and our struggles and what was going on. And we were all coffee people from different places, right? So, um, Eric and I was at Ivy wild and Christopher was at, uh, the wild goose and Seth was at urban steam and Bevan was at 50, 50 and Abigail was at the goose and Alpine modern. So like, and, and there was probably five or six other people that would come in and out of those meetings as well. So it was more than six of us. It wasn't to start a coffee shop. It was more just to like, yeah, hang and like and just learn and encourage and dream and, and talk. And But then, you know, one of the one of the things that we sort of uh, that we sort of kept coming back to was that um, that we've all worked in a lot of cafes that don't that were never opened by people who have worked in the industry. A lot of times people open a restaurant or they open a coffee shop, but they don't understand like the industry. They had never worked in it. And so the way they build the bar doesn't cater to like good efficiency or good service. The, the outline of the coffee shop, you know, just doesn't outline um, good flow and a good guest experience and things like this. And these are always frustrating things. None of us have a lot of money. None of us, you know, have been able to invest in our own cafe. We're all working on somebody else's investment and really working on somebody else's dream. Which is fine and that's great, but it didn't always like – there's so many so much knowledge that we've had because we're the ones who actually are on the floor behind the bar, all of these things. And so oftentimes we kept coming back to, man, like what if we could design a coffee shop? Like how, how could we serve guests really, really well? How could we love our city really, really well using our combined knowledge and our combined experience to make something really beautiful? Because this is what we do, right? And but that was still it just kind of was dreaming. It wasn't even real. And so but then all of a sudden we're like, well, what if we actually did it? And then it's like, well, I wonder. And, you know, and, and then and then we started talking. And as it got a little bit more serious, people that didn't want to participate, you know, kind of stopped coming to those meetings. And we didn't just randomly choose the group. The group sort of chose itself. And it ended up being the six of us that just kept talking and it kept sticking around. And then um, you know, a long three year story short, you know, we ended up raising a little bit of money and then blue dot place came into the picture and we got to go in next door and bada bing, bada boom, you know, here we are. So the group kind of chose itself who we really were committed to it. It was the people that said, you know what, like I want to stay here. And that's why they kept coming to the meetings. Um, but yeah, we're incredibly different and it, and it's so fun. Bevan, for example, he, uh, he's from New Zealand. He had worked at a great, one of the best, he worked at the best coffee company in all of New Zealand. Um, called Coffee Supreme. And he he met his wife and he moved here to Colorado Springs and and he did so much good work for Fifty Fifty and Switchback Coffee. Um, he helped take them to a whole nother level and we love that coffee company in town. And you know, so Bevan did that and Eric Eric was one of, is the most monumental person in in really making the principal's office and kind of that side of Ivy Wild what it is. And you know, he is so good. Seth uh, Seth is such a great guy and he. Um, Seth is one of the staples in Colorado Springs culture. He's a he's a really special guy. He's worked at so many of the coffee shops. He's known for riding his bike all over. He um he's just uh he knows so many people downtown and he was invested in downtown long before any of us were. You know, Abigail, she uh she's just a, such a badass. Like she is such a high capacity woman and she just um she gets things done and she just keeps us like like loyal would not be what it is without her. And like, and she's just so great, and, and her experience in the industry and stuff is so valuable, uh, you know. And then like, and Christopher, you know, he's a world class artist and photographer, and he's just got such a beautiful eye. And loyal, you know, wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for him, um, you know. But the thing is, is, is that we're six people. We have incredibly different personalities. We have incredibly different gifts, and we identify the gifts that, that each one of us has and that we're allowing those people, no matter who it is across the board to, um, 
to really work within the gifts that they have and work within their skill sets. You know, the worst thing we could do is is force one of the owners or force one of the team members to do a lot of work in an area that they're not very good at. And I think that's an unfortunate thing about a lot of businesses and a lot of things is that people end up doing a lot of things that they're not good at. Thus, it doesn't turn out very well. And so what we've done at Loyal is we've really created, you know, six roles based on, um, of course, based on the needs of the cafe, but like, but also based on the gifts and the skills that those particular people have. Each person gets kind of the final say in their category, whether it has to do with barista training and coffee quality. The people who are more skilled and versed in that get to have the most say in that. And, you know, the people with guest experience and, and public speaking, you know, like that's why I'm the one doing this interview. That's what I do. That's what I like. I have fun doing these things. Um, not everybody likes to be interviewed and be on the videos or be on the whatever, like, So not everybody's going to do that, but I know I enjoy this, right? So all six work in the coffee house on a regular basis? Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, we've hired a handful of people too. We are stupid busy. It's bananas. Um, When we say barista owned and operated, we really mean it. Like we are in the day-to-day. We know what's going on. Um, You know, and there's not just the coffee. There's the coffee roasting and the wholesaling and training and all of these things as well. So – But the owners are heavily involved in the day-to-day operations. Uh, There's no doubt about it. 